I hate bullying guys, and one of the reasons why I hate bullying so much is because I was bullied a lot when I was a kid. Ever since I was a kid, I was picked on significantly worse than all of my peers, and so much so to the point that it actually had a lot of mental effects that I suffer from even till today. And what if I told you that the main reason I got bullied was from the franchise and the show that I make most of my videos about? Dragon Ball Z and this is going to be an unscripted honest and true telling of my story of bullying I touched on this a little bit on my a video that most people wouldn't upload last year But I'm gonna go more in depth about it and kind of send a message to bullies out there and to People who suffer from bullying to know that there are people out there who really care about you and have your back And you just have to be honest in a world like this. So where did all of this happen? Well, if I were to tell my story of bullying, it would probably have to be going back to middle school. Now, the thing about kids that's really interesting is that when you're a kid, right, you know, when you go to school, most of the times when you're in elementary school, the kids that are around you are all kind of the same. And I talk to my dad a lot about this. He's like, kids from like four to like 10 years old are all sort of the same because mommy and daddy protect them. And obviously it depends on where they live and their life circumstances. But essentially, most kids are the same in terms of their thoughts, what they want. They want comfort. They want to feel safe. You know, they want to have fun. They want to have, you know, parents. And if they don't have parents, they want to have guardians in their lives that are going to be nurturing to them so that they can learn and grow and they also want people to be patient with them and the interesting thing about this is that because kids are so similar when they're young bullying isn't as bad but when you get to middle school something really interesting happens as kids develop and they get older, kids start to have more personality differences. There starts to become more socialization because teachers aren't forcing kids to hold hands and, you know, learn everything in one classroom. Now kids are going to start being able to pick some more of their classes because when I was in middle school, I picked some of my classes. We have electives and then, you know, students walk to class instead of having their teachers walk with them so there's this independence movement that kids have in middle school and the interesting thing about this is that when you combine the childlike behavior of kids with more individuality now you have people who are going to start disassociating themselves with other all the black kids hang out with the black kids all the hispanic kids hang out with the hispanic kids all the white kids hang out with the white kids when in fact in elementary school the teachers kind of forced us to all hang out with each other and what this leads to is kids having a major problem of fitting in and that's when kids start looking awkward and what's my story in all of this well my story in all of this, guys, is the fact that I was the kid that still really, 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 really loved Dragon Ball. And even till today on YouTube, I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that my obsession with this franchise is well above the average person. And I'm not saying that in an egotistical, boastful way. I'm just saying I don't know too many people who are willing to make 600 videos about Dragon Ball. There are people out there who have, and you guys probably know what their names are. But the average person would not make over 600 videos about a franchise that is this old. And because of this, I often felt you know, lost when I was at school because I had this major obsession with this franchise that a lot of my male friends mostly, and to some degree a few female friends, kind of lost by the time we had hit middle school. When we hit middle school, it was all about, you know, I want to talk to the girls, I want to be the cool kid, I want to play sports, I want to play more mature video games instead of the more Nintendo-like video games, I want to be the cool kid, I want to fit in, I want to wear cool clothes, when in fact, because of the way I was raised, and I already went in depth to that, 
I was kind of a social outcast, and even today as an adult, I'm somewhat of a social outcast, but it was really bad in middle school, and today, I stand at about 6'1", 6'2", with shoes, you know, I'm a moderately muscular guy because I've been going to the gym, so I'm more physically imposing now than I was when I was a kid, and I was a short, scrawny little guy that used to get picked on, so obviously my body type is a lot different, and I had a major growth spurt between 7th and 8th grade where I grew like five inches and I was close to the height that I am now. So because of this, I was this little guy that everybody can pick on. I was this guy that everybody can bully. And because I had this major obsession with this Dragon Ball series that everybody started losing interest with, it gave the bullies a lot of ammo to fire at me every day. And if I were to mention something about the bullies and physical stature, one thing I would say is that the bullying definitely decreased significantly by the time I got to high school and surprisingly I actually went to a ghetto high school but I went to a moderately good middle school and the interesting thing about this is that my thoughts are that maybe high schoolers are just generally more mature and they don't have time to just pick on people the same way but when I went back to my middle school roots I realized that my size had a significant impact on how I was being bullied in two ways. When I was small, people picked on me because I was small. When I grew taller, because at the beginning of the year, my parents had bought clothes that fit me at a specific size, as the year went on and I grew a lot more inches, the clothes didn't fit me by the time the year ended, so I looked really awkward with these pants or these khaki pants that are flooding as they would say as you can see my ankles as I'm walking around and people would have even more ammo to just completely pick on me and obviously my parents had bigger issues in their life to consider buying me new pants so I wouldn't get bullied so it's little things like that that really translate over time but we got to talk about some of the ways that I was bullied as a kid well I don't even know where to begin but I used to get bullied every single aspect of a school day. Getting on the bus to school, being in school, coming home from school. I was bullied so badly to the point where my parents actually started taking me to school in the mornings and picking me up so that I wouldn't get bullied. But then there's something else to happen. My parents had a rough time doing that with their work schedule, so they hired this guy who I'll refer to as Mr. T. And this guy actually allow you know picked me up when I was you know obviously a kid and he dropped me off in the mornings and picked me up from school when it was over and they felt that if I didn't go on the bus and come home from the bus that I wouldn't be bullied well this sort of solved the problem in the morning and the afternoon but the, what this led to is the fact that I was bullied even more while I was in school because the bullies would obviously anticipate that I'm not in the morning and I'm not coming home. So they're like, you know what, we're going to make the most of my time with this guy when we're in school. And that led to even harsher bullying when I was in school itself. But what kind of ways was I bullied? Well, when it comes to me riding the school bus... I was so weird compared to all of my peers, I guess you could say, that I could almost never even find a seat on the bus, so much so to the point where every single time I went on the school bus, coming home from school, obviously not going in the mornings, I would always have to get on the bus early. Like as soon as class would end, I would rush to the bus because I knew for a complete fact that if I got to the bus late, and when you get to the bus late, you always know that you have to share a seat with people, I would be sitting on the floor. And what does this lead to, guys? Well, when you think about it, if you are a person who is already a social outcast, right, and you can't find a seat on the bus because nobody wants to sit next to your weird self, what is this going to happen? Well, now I'm going to have to sit on the floor, and I'm going to look even more awkward being this nerdy Steve Urkel-looking black guy that's now sitting on the floor. So what are the bullies going to do now? They're going to pick on me 10 times as worse because I am in an awkward position, I already look awkward, and I already have this awkward fascination with this anime show that most people already started losing interest with. And because of this, they would do everything in their power 
power to make my life miserable while I was riding home from the bus. When it comes to the insults, when it comes to shoving me as they're walking past me on the bus because I can't get a seat, when it comes to calling me Quinn Urkel, when it comes to just literally making me feel like I was the biggest piece of crap ever. So much so to the point where there were times where I had a seat and some bullies would want to sit down and they would actually tell me to get out of my seat and because I'm this scrawny weak guy that doesn't stand up for himself I would do it and I never told my parents any of this so much to the point where if my parents knew how badly I was bullied it would probably come from actually watching this video which they might do in the future because they didn't know how badly I was bullied and there were other days where I would go to school and I would be terrified terrified to use the bathroom because I knew that every time I go into the bathroom people would throw water on me people would actually in two or three cases fill a water bottle with piss and throw it on me I couldn't even stand in the stalls properly because people would sometimes try to throw my pants down and make it awkward as I'm taking a piss on I would always have to go into the little rooms I can't forget the difference between stall and the little rooms but you guys know what I'm talking about the little you know the little pissers versus the actual having the privacy in the rooms but what I said is if you if I ever went to the stalls where I had more privacy and I'm by myself they would just throw water over it to piss me off anyways so there was no winning scenario of me going to the bathroom if I'm more exposed bullying if I hide myself bullying I would have to always go when nobody else did and it led to a lot of paranoia when I was a kid I was paranoid to just be myself because of this obsession with Dragon Ball but I didn't touch on to my obsession with Dragon Ball itself from a childlike perspective as I've gotten older one of the key things about me and this Dragon Ball franchise that I love so much is the fact that I can voice my opinions on this series. And when you factor in that most kids, at least at the time, didn't love Dragon Ball as much as me and wasn't as invested in the Dragon Ball series as much as I was, I really couldn't have conversations about this series the way I could with others, which led to me being on this Facebook group. Actually, no, not a Facebook group. What I'm talking about, I didn't use Facebook. I went on this MySpace group called the Sons of Liberty. And what we all did was we actually role played as a lot of these Dragon Ball characters. And I was Teen Gohan because Gohan for many, many, many years was my favorite character in Dragon Ball up until about four or five years ago. And if I were to add something about Gohan here, guys, one of the reasons why Gohan was my favorite character is actually dealing with bullying itself. When you look at how rough of Gohan's upbringing was being captured by Piccolo, being trained by the Saiyans, being bullied by so many villains in the series, he was always that character who was kind-hearted, he was smart, and he always gave you the belief that his powers can overcome anything when he really puts his mind to it. And I believed in Gohan the same way I believed in myself that eventually as I got older I could overcome all of my trials and tribulations and become a better person the way Gohan did throughout the series. So, because of this, you know, I really found like my haven of friends on the internet because I finally found people who were big Dragon Ball fans that really cared about the franchise as much as I did because my real life physical peers couldn't relate to me the way that I could relate to people on the internet. So ever since I was a kid, I found this obsession of making friends on the internet in ways and venting my thoughts about, you know, these characters that I was really in tuned with as a kid because I couldn't do it in real life. And that would obviously help me develop today as I'm giving you an introspective view of myself because now as a YouTuber, that's the exact same thing I'm doing on just a much bigger platform because YouTube is way bigger than, you know, obviously just going on MySpace and role playing as characters in some forum and just some group discussions so essentially my obsession with Dragon Ball on the internet was starting ever since I was younger and one of the things about me that I've said before is that I didn't really watch Dragon Ball Z during the Toonami boom that everybody else watched that was in my group so I really didn't get a chance to watch all of those episodes so I watched a lot of them on the internet you know my parents would buy me some of the orange bricks which at the time I thought was amazing because I'd never seen Dragon Ball in Japanese and although you know a lot of people 
people say the orange bricks are the worst release of Dragon Ball. When you're a kid and you don't care about, you know, the original dub and the original soundtrack and you don't care about all of these extra things that Dragon Ball weeaboos or I don't want to use the term weeaboos, but hardcore Dragon Balls really Dragon Ball fans really care about, you just want to watch the show and the orange bricks were really the way that I got a chance to watch all of the things that I missed when I was a kid. And when you couple this with a lot of video games like, you know, Dragon Ball Sagas, all of the handheld games, it just made me feel like I was different. And one of the things that I had to start doing was stop bringing my Game Boys to school because I would often try to disassociate myself with peers and tune out by playing video games whenever I would have free time or whenever I would go to the cafeteria, but there were numerous attempts that I stopped of people trying to take my Game Boy away from me, so much so to the point where I actually stopped bringing my Game Boy to school, and most of the games I played, as you would guess, would be the Dragon Ball games. But the biggest question in all of this into my life is, what kind of friends did I have? Did I have any friends at all? Well, I did. And the few friends I had were all socially awkward nerds and geeks just like myself. All of the people that I talked to were all of the people who were weak kids that were being bullied. And I was being bullied not only for Dragon Ball, but also for Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I used to duel people in school before class started. And as you would have guessed, there were numerous attempts to steal my cards by the bullies because they figured that that was the one thing I actually enjoyed, which made me much more reluctant to talk to people. And the biggest part in all of this, guys, that I wanted to talk to that I feel would really send the message to all of the bullies out there is dealing with physical abuse versus mental abuse. You see, most of my bullying was not really physical. Yes, I was bullied sometimes. Yes, I was jumped. Yes, sometimes I was hit. I was shoved around and, you know, picked on physically. But a lot of the bullying really came from the insults. I am of an African Caribbean descent. I have a little bit of, of Caribbean and Hispanic African heritage in me. When I mean Hispanic, I'm meaning Afro-Honduran and I will also being Afro-Trinidadian. So I kind of have a lot of those mixes within me. So I had a little bit of a Caribbean accent when I was in school. The kids picked up on that. You know, I obviously lost it because I talked to so many American kids. But you know, I had a really strong Trinidadian accent when I was a kid and I lost it as I was talking to all them Yankee boys as I started getting older. You know and as I was like that a lot of the african-american kids I really couldn't fit in with them because their culture was different from mine's and because I was black and I really couldn't speak Spanish I really couldn't fit in with the Hispanic kids and there really weren't any white kids at my school so I was kind of in this limbo class of I'm all by myself and all of this verbal abuse really made me lose confidence in myself. I didn't believe in myself because I thought that everybody in this world hated me. And the few people that actually talked to me would talk to me in privacy. I have this friend who I'm good friends with even till today, but this friend openly admitted that he didn't talk to me openly in school because of how weird I looked compared to everybody else. Because nobody ever wanted to do it. I mean, so much so the point where I couldn't even buy lunch without people taking my lunch money. I would have days where I would buy a pizza and when I turn around my pizza's already gone and somebody else was eating it. Like, it was that bad. It was really, really, really bad to the point I couldn't even eat my own lunch. You know, and I understand that a lot of kids have gone through way worse physical abuse. Some kids have committed suicide over this. And that's why I'm making this message because I feel like everybody always thinks about, you know, the physical aspects. And if you're not being physically bullied, then you're not really being bullied. But we don't forget about the mental aspects of bullying that will haunt kids for the rest of their lives, even until they're 23 years old like I am today, and I suffer from depression and confidence issues because of bullying, and obviously I've gotten a lot older and I've gotten much better with these issues than I was in the past. I don't suffer with this the same way I did five or six years ago, but when I went to high school, 
I had an even worse time fitting in because in high school, I was damaged by all of the effects that I suffered with while I was in middle school. So it had a long lasting impact on everything going forward in the future and it also led to me being extremely defensive of myself and I take things very seriously at least up until a certain point because I started having these lash outs against random people whenever you know all of the bullying that would come to me would just get so much so to the point where I would just blow up and just take my anger out on people. You guys wanna see two examples of me taking out my anger on YouTube? I'll give you an example. The perfect example is my clickbait video from last year. That clickbait video was an amalgamation of me experiencing all of the bullying that I went through as a kid and all of that pent up frustration of people bullying me, not so much on the internet because, you know, obviously just typing, you know, you're a dirty guy, you're ugly, you know, that, that doesn't have the same effect as seeing it in person, but that was pent up frustration of me being angry about the community and all of this clickbait and I exploded in a video. And that was my anger rising to the surface because it's like filling a balloon with too much air. At some point, it just pops and it leads to you being extremely defensive because at so many points of your life, you're taking all this bullying in and you're not really expelling your anger out in ways other than playing video games and associating with yourself. And if there was one more thing I should add to this video, guys, about bullying that really affected me as an adult would have to be the face reveal I did two years ago. And this is a very sensitive subject. But when I showed my face on YouTube, I didn't expect the reactions to be what they were in terms of 60 to 70% of the comments being me being black when in fact the whole purpose of that video was me giving 20 minutes of trying to give people advice about how to make it on YouTube because I hit 100,000 subs and I wanted to share my experiences with all of you guys. And that's fine, most of people who watched it probably didn't care to comment. But the fact that so many people said negative things such as his voice is too deep to be white or his he speaks too properly to be a black guy and people saying I'm going to unsub from this N word and you know all of these horrible things it really made me start thinking about the vile people there are on the internet because I've always been black I'm black now and I will always be black. And to think that I was the guy who attracted you to my channel by making videos and you're gonna leave because you know what I look like is absurd. Because I'm the exact same person I was when I made the video than when I wasn't showing my face. So that level of hypocrisy was really validated when I looked at my YouTube statistics and showed that the most amount of subs I ever lost on my YouTube channel up until that point was on the day of my face reveal and the day after which shows you that that video had an effect of people unsubscribing because of what I look like and that honestly affected me and I'll be honest in admitting that I don't like talking about it but it was a sensitive subject and I make this video for you guys because if you're a person who's out there who's a kid and you're watching this video and you're hearing my horrible experiences as a kid and there's a lot more things I could touch on that you know, I obviously don't want to go too much in depth about like things like people spitting in my musical instrument, you know, while I wasn't looking or, you know, just just horrible things that just scarred me from the time I was a kid. Talk to somebody, talk to a counselor, talk to your parents. Don't make the mistake I did when I was a kid by not fighting back and by not telling people. And I am not a fan of violence. I really don't believe in hurting people because my parents told me never fight back. They told me always talk to a teacher. But I felt that I would look like a coward if I talked to a teacher and I wasn't really that physically imposing so I never really fought back. And what that led to was me being bullied more. I feel if I, if I grabbed my musical instrument and just smashed somebody across the head with it, maybe it wouldn't have been the best solution but it probably would have told people not to mess with me and I have a friend whose name I'll leave anonymous that hit somebody across the head with a two by four and this guy was actually very 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 small ever since we were elementary kids like even smaller than me and he would always get picked on but he would always fight back and that so much so to the point where the bullies actually stopped picking on him because they knew he would always resist especially because of his small frame I mean this guy stabbed somebody with a pencil he really didn't play 
around with his bullies and I respect my friend for this because he never backed down and he always showed his bullies who's boss even if he wasn't physically stronger than them. So violence is never the answer guys but stick up for yourselves, find help and spread this video around to really give the message that there are bullies that will bully you for anything in this world. My story is, is that it happened to me because of Dragon Ball Z, because of my Dragon Ball book bag, and me signing my name as Gohan when I'm doing a homework assignment. Like, I was so obsessed that I called myself Gohan when I was putting my homework into my teacher. Like, it was that ridiculous, and that childlike behavior made me an easy target for all of the dregs of the earth to just pick on. So, my message is over, I've talked for over 20 minutes, I don't usually do videos like this, but I want to make the world a better place by spreading this out and knowing that you're never alone in this world, and although my childhood experience was terrible when it came to bullying, especially being a black nerd, I want you guys to live a better life, and if you've already gone through this, make your life better for somebody else. So that's my video for today. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys.